Kathleen Magley says, I'm in the beginning of my recovery, again, having a hard time finding the words to explain to my loved ones why or how it happened. Alcoholism is so intense. It sure is. Uh, addiction is so intense. One thing I will say, based on what I just read there, was just perhaps remind yourself gently that you don't um, you don't have to explain to your loved ones anything uh, if you don't want to. And you certainly can. But give yourself permission, I think, to keep more of that to yourself than you might wonder if you should. It's your journey. Um, and it's not that you don't have people you want to connect with, but just remember you don't, you don't technically owe them anything um, as far as how, trying to get them to understand. I would say find people that are like-minded, accept and forgive those that just don't understand. That's okay. They're not violating your rights either by not understanding and, and just make peace with yourself as best you can outside of, of the want to have other people validate perhaps some of the difficulties you're going through, some of the struggles you might be experiencing. The vast majority of people will never stay 100% sober and abstinent for their entire lifetimes. And I think it's very important and something I've come to change about my mindset when it comes to substances. It's important not to see yourself as a failure for drinking or using. Now, there are inherent risks, and if you're someone who 100% would benefit from being sober 100% of the time, of course, um, it's a beautiful thing, it's a wonderful thing, but it doesn't make you better or worse than anyone who is or isn't at all. And something I've done to reframe my brain around this entire topic is look at it this way, and I learned this from the Ignited Recovery Program with Dr. Adi Jaffe. Let's say I'm someone who has a propensity to drink fairly heavily four or five nights a week. That's just the way I am, hypothetically. And through some mindfulness practices, through some therapy, through a change in perspective when it comes to success versus failure, when it comes to substance, and for a determination to live a recovery-based, aka healthy, mindful, balance-based lifestyle regardless, and alongside of a proclivity for drinking, I might reframe the four or five days a week of drinking with hard work. Let's say I get that to one or two. Let's say one or two days a week I'm drinking pretty hard. But I'm someone who, for all intents and purposes, might be the type that is very likely to drink four or five or six. But through hard work and through acceptance and through openness, I get to one or two. That means I'm not drinking six or five, five or six days out of the week. Now, that's a positive way to frame that, right? I think that sort of mindset will lend itself a lot better to even less drinking and even less negative attachment to labels and self-persecution and self-judgment than looking at it as, oh, I drank once or, one or, once or twice this week heavily, I failed. Because that sort of self-deprecating mindset, that thought pattern tends to lend itself very, very well to further abuse and hopelessness and apathy and this idea that, well, fuck it, I may as well not try. And everyone who's ever paddled anything when it comes to overindulgence, let's say sex, porn, um, food, I suppose, might be the most common or, or the most relatable for everyone. We know that. The whole like, well, I fucked up. I may as well triple down on it. What if we reframe that? What if we didn't put a good or bad label to it? Um, that's what I've been doing, and it's been helping. But I'm not a doctor, obviously. Not yet, at least. 